urogynecology urogynecology and basically i have uh, summarized very important points of the urogynecology in this whole video that's why it's a bit lengthy but it can cover uh, all the important topics related to the urogynecology so first of all let us study lower urinary tract symptoms luts lower urinary tract symptoms can be grouped into three categories uh, lower urinary tract is equal to bladder and urethra stool symptoms which are most common voiding symptoms and post menstruation symptoms okay so three symptoms low uh, stool symptoms voiding symptoms and post menstruation symptoms stool symptoms these are experienced during the storage phase and describes the abnormalities of the urine storage okay daytime frequency a perception of the voiding too often during the day nocturia is having uh, to wake one or more times during the night to pass urine urgency is a sudden and compelling desire to pass urine which is difficult to defer a urinary incontinence is a complaint of any involuntary leakage of the urine stress incontinence is involuntary leakage on effort or exertion or on sneezing or coughing and urgency urinary incontinence is involuntary leakage uh, accompanied by or immediately preceded by urgency mixed urinary incontinence is involuntary leakage associated with urgency uh, and also with effort sneezing or coughing nocturnal and uresis is any involuntary loss of urine that occurs during sleep now assessing urinary incontinence urinary history a story symptoms should be categorized into stress urinary un, uh, incontinence in which activities that increase the intra abdominal pressure such as coughing sneezing jumping running and lifting with these activities there is incontinence now what happens to overactive bladder defining uh, symptom is urgency frequency nocturia and urge leaking and another symptoms are those of mixed symptoms okay now commencement of the non invasive treatment does not require urodynamics and should be based on the history so history is very important initial conservative treatment for the mixed symptom is uh, guided by predominant symptoms history taking excluding other pathology like hematuria is an important symptom that requires the prompt investigation to exclude renal uh, renal tract tumor dysuria bladder pain together with the overactive bladder symptoms may be due to urinary tract infection in the absence of infection interstitial cystitis is a possible diagnosis and stool symptoms in associated with abdominal distension and pain pain could be due to the pelvic or abdominal masses pressing on the bladder pelvic organ prolapse especially of the anterior vaginal uh, com, uh, compartment may cause void symptoms such as kinking of urethra that may occur due to descent of the prolapse and constipation may worsen widening symptoms as impaction of the stool can compress and obstruct the proximal urethra now in the physical examination the general physical examination or raised bmi is respected for urine incontinence and also increases the risk of any surgical intervention and it comprises the um, efficacy of the surgery and patient women with a raised bmi should be encouraged to lose weight and on abdominal examination abdominal pelvic masses large ovarian tumors and fibroids often cause frequency of the micturition the presence and position of the previous surgical incision and hence an anatomical distortion from previous surgery also increases the intraoperative risk uh vaginal examination uh, we check for the pelvic organ prolapse by cuffing or bearing down will make the prolapse more obvious and anterior vaginal wall cyst or urethral verticulum can be seen and atrophic vaginal changes on general inspection we find the topical vaginal is um, vaginal changes can be seen basically estrogen can improve the frequency and urgency okay and cuffing with the full bladder during the vaginal examination may demonstrate the stress leakage and pelvic floor muscle strength assessment uh, through the digital palpation is done to confirm contraction and strength now in an investigation first is that of urine testing a urine dipstick should be undertaken in all women presenting with urinary incontinence to exclude urinary tract infection hematuria and diabetes mellitus so we check the dipstick if it is positive for leukocyte and nitrate then uh, we send msu and prescribe the antibiotics and if no uti symptoms we send the msu and do not prescribe antibiotics unless there is a positive urine culture result another important thing is that assessing the residual volume the post void residual volume is the volume of the urine left in the bladder after voiding and may or post uh, void residual by bladder scan or catheterization in the woman when the symptoms suggest of the bladder dysfunction of recurrent urea and use bladder scan in preference to the catheterization bladder diary is a simple and effective tool for assessing the storage symptoms and it is recommended in initial assessment to all women with urinary incontinence and minimum of 3 days of the diary converting Uh, variation in their usual activities 
Now, in bladder diaries, for record five parameters, type and volume of the fluid intakes, it may reveal the excessive intake of the fluid, caffeine, alcohol. Normal fluid intake is between 1.5 to 2 liter per day. And frequency of the wide and wide volume is also checked, like widening more than eight times per day is abnormal, more than one time per night is abnormal, and frequent small widened volumes with a normal urine output can be due to detrusor overactivity or PBS. Frequent large volumes are associated with oral drinking or diabetes mellitus. Polyuria is defined as 24 or urine output of more than 40 ml per kg. Leakage episode, whether leakage was pre preceded by urgency or precipitated by physical activity or coughing. That is the type of the bladder diary. In, in investigations, we also do urodynamic testing, which consists of the few tests of the bladder and urethral function in relation to the storing and releasing urine, that is filling and widening, and is composed of neurophometry and systometry. Neurodynamic is not um, required before commencing non-invasive treatment for the storage symptoms. And also not required before the surgery in women who report only pure stress urinary symptoms or stress uh, predominant mixed urinary symptoms based on the history and examination. Now, urophilometry is a test that measures the volume of the urine uh, released um, and the uh, speed um, at which it is uh, released and how long the release takes to diagnose um, or exclude the widening difficulties. Patient will be asked to drink water until uh, feel ready to pass urine, then empty the bladder on the urophilo meter and a graph of the flow rate ml per second against the time is recorded urophilometry is followed by the bladder um, ultrasound to measure the post wide residual volume so in this setting the urophilometry is done now the normal uh, bell shaped curve is seen here normal euro flow steady measurement peak flow rate or maximum flow rate q max more than 15 ml per second widened volume is more than 200 ml flow time is less than 30 second residual volume is less than 50 ml and abnormal plateau shape graph and decrease q max is shown in this graph and multi channel filling and widening systemetry is shown before surgery in the women who um, have any of the following urge predominant mixed urinary incontinence or urinary incontinence in which type type is unclear and sometimes suggestive of the widening dysfunction anterior or apical prolapse and history of the previous surgery for stress urinary incontinence now what are the normal systemetric um, values first wide uh, first is at wide is at 150 to 200 ml maximum desired wide is more than 400 ml during filling no rise in, in the um the true pressure less than 15 and during widening a uh, less than 50 second uh, uh, centimeter rise in the lateral pressure with a peak flow rate of more than 15 uh, meter per second residual volume urine of uh, uh, less than 50 ml that is the setting now multi channel filling and the widening systemetry systemetry is carried out after urophilometry and uh, Two transducers are inserted into the bladder and rectum. The bladder is filled with a normal saline. As it fills the bladder, catheters measures the vesicle pressure, while the catheter measures the uh, abdominal pressure. And uh, the detrusor um, pressure is equal to vesicle minus abdominal pressure and commence on the first incision to wide and maximum desire to wide is done by the patient. Patient is asked to comment on these. Okay, so that is the graphic presentation. Now, when the maximum desire reached, the bladder capacity filling is stopped and the patient performs the various actions like the uh, coughing, listening to the uh, to the running water, start um, start jump, jumps and at the end of the filling pressure, the patient is asked to wide and if widening abnormality is due to poor detrusor function, low pressure and low uh, flow rate or obstruction, high pressure or high flow rate. Now, that is the graphic presentation of the stress urine in incontinence. Okay, the first line shows the volume infused. Now, with time, the vesicle pressure increases with episodes and abdominal pressure increases with episodes. And there is no uh, increase in the detrusor pressure. So, when we check the flow rate, there is leakage. So, basically, stress urine incontinence, if you check the definition, is the uh, rise in the uh, vesicle and abdominal pressure basically there is leakage with the rise in abdominal and vesicle pressure when the abdominal and vesicle pressure is uh, increased the flow rate is increased in the absence of the uh, detrusor pressure so basically in the filling phase uh, we check the or we uh, diagnose the stress urinary incontinence the second thing is that of the detrusor work activity in which uh, in which what happens that when volume is infused what happens that um, vesicle pressure is increased and the abdominal pressure is not uh, does not increase with increasing vesicle pressure but detrusor pressure increases and there is leakage with increase in the detrusor pressure 
So what is a stress test? Stress test is an excellent method of demonstrating object objectively the presence of stress urinary incontinence and the steps include catheterization. Urine sample is sent for culture. 250 ml of the norm of warm saline is instilled into the bladder. A leakage is noted in sitting and supine position and net weight gain of 2 gram or more is indicated of, of um, genuine stress incontinence. Now, Q-tip test. Increase mobility of urethra with incontinence. Now, management of the overactive bladder. Non-surgical treatments like lifestyle interventions are there. Recommend a trial of the caffeine reduction to the woman with overactive bladder considering advising women and with the urine incontinence um, um, and a high or a low fluid intake to modify their fluid intake and advise women with urine incontinence or overactive bladder to have BMI greater than 32 lose weight. The non-surgical method is includes the behavioral therapy like bladder training. Offer the bladder training uh, lasting for a minimum of six weeks as a first line. And technique include instruct the woman to wide every 1.5 hours during the day. And 1.5 when 1.5 hour is reached, increase to 0.5 and continue with two hour leg widening. And allow the normal intake of 1500 ml per 24 hours. Now medical management includes all these things as well. Before starting treatment with the medical medicine explain to the woman the likelihood of the medicine being successful, the dry mouth and constipation may indicate that the medicine is starting to have an effect. I may not be, I may not see benefits until she is for at least four weeks. Now choosing medicine, three different drugs like oxybutynin, toluidine, and therifenacin and do not offer oxybutynin immediate release to the older woman. If the first medicine is not effective or tolerated, offer another medicine, offer transfer medicines to the woman unable to tolerate oral medicines. Mirabirgara. Uh, recommended um, as an option for the patients in whom anti-muscarinic drugs are contraindicated or ineffective or have unacceptable side effects. And desmopressin may be considered uh, to reduce nocturia in the woman who find it troublesome symptoms. And intravaginal estrogen to treat the overactive symptoms in postmenopausal women with a vaginal atrophy. Now, reviewing the medicines. Face-to-face -face or telephonic review four weeks after starting a new medicine. If improvement is optimal, continue treatment. And if there is no or suboptimal improvement or intolerable adverse effects, change the dose or try another alternative medicines. Refer to women who have tried taking medicines but for whom it has not been successful or tolerated um, to secondary care offer a review in the primary care to the women who remain or, on the long term medicines every 12 months or 6 months if they are um, aged over 75 now invasive procedure for the overactive bladder is the majority of the women uh, where response to conservative therapies and the drug treatment, uh, a minority will continue to complain the lower urinary tract symptoms and offer urodynamics to determine whether the detrusor or what activity is causing her overactive bladder symptoms. Now, intravisical therapy, botulinum toxin type A injection after a local MDT review of her bladder wall injection to the woman with detrusor or what activity and consider treatment for the woman with the symptoms of overactive bladder in whom urodynamic has not been not demonstrated detrusor or what activity. Now, explain to the patient the likelihood of the complete or partial symptom release, uh, relief and the process of the clean intermittent catheterization, the risk of the adverse effect including an increased risk of the urinary tract infection, that there is not much evidence about the long, how long the injection works for. Use 100 unit as an initial dose of the botulinum uh, toxin type A. And offer face-to-face -face or telephonic review within 12 weeks of the first treatment. If there is a good symptoms relief, tell the woman that how to self-refer to for the prone specialist review if the symptoms return. And if there is inadequate symptom relief, uh, relief consider increasing subsequent dose to 200 units and review within the 12 weeks if there are no effects discussed with the local MDT. Now coming to the neuromodulation, which is percutaneous sacral nerve stimulation, permanent implantable devices in the S3 sacral foramens, and after MDT review, offer percutaneous sacral nerve stimulation to the woman if their symptoms has not responded to the non-invasive management and their symptoms have not responded to the botulinum toxin type A, or uh, they are not prepared to accept the risk uh, of needing uh, catheterization associated with the botulinum toxin type A. Now, reconstructive surgery, augmentation, cystoplasty. Bladder is bisected almost um, completely and a patch of the gut equal to the length of the bisected bladder is sewn in place and restrict surgery to women not responded to the non-surgical management and willing to be uh, and, uh, willing and able to self-catheterize some time permanently. Discuss the common and serious complications like bowel disturbance, metabolic acidosis, mucus production, UTI, urinary retention, the small risk of malignancy. 
or what is uh, urinary uh, diversion uh, as a lost resort or management fail and the woman cannot manage clean intermittent catheterization and it is illegal conduct to create stoma for the urinary diversion and it provides a long lifelong follow up so that is a stoma outside the body and conduct inside the body now management of the stress in continence conservative management lifestyle intervention advise the woman to modify their fluid intake advise the woman who have been my greater than 30 to lose their weight and pelvic muscle training a uh, patient should undergo a trial of the supervised pelvic floor muscle training of at least three months before surgery and should comprise at least eight contraction performs three times a day and um, how it is done women uh, learn to pre contract the pelvic floor muscles before uh, and during increase in intra-abdominal pressure to prevent leaking uh, leakage and the patient who do not respond to the treatment or have prolapse and should be referred for the secondary care 50 percent of the cases medical therapy duloxetine as an ri it is um, used in the treatment of the depression and is only drug license for the treatment of stress urinary incontinence should not be used as a first line treatment or as a second line treatment for stress urinary incontinence may be offered as an alternative to surgical treatment consult the woman about the adverse effects like nausea constipation dry mouth and disturbed mood now surgical methods of, of management of stress urinary incontinence the most effective way of curing stress urinary incontinence up to 90% cure rate and surgery aims to elevate the bladder neck and proximal urethra into intra-abdominal position to increase the outflow resistance and if non-surgical method or management of the stress urinary incontinence has failed offer the choice of the colposis suspension open or laparoscopic autologous tractus facial sling and retropubic mid uh, urethral mesh sling now coming to the birch corpus suspension which is basically the retropubic space is dissected until the white paravaginal tissue later to the bladder is exposed and four mm, pairs of the non-absorbable or long-term sutures are inserted between the fascia and aleobacterial ligaments retropubic space is dissected until the white paravaginal tissue later to the bladder neck is exposed and four pillar of the four pairs of the non-absorbable inserted between the fascia and iliobacterial ligaments complication includes the whining difficulties which are common and usually resolved with a short time and if they persist the patient may need to carry out um, continuous intermittent self catheterization urgency or urge, um, urine and incontinence and retropubic mid urethral mesh sling procedures advise the woman that it is permanent implant and complete removal might be possible using the bottom up approach with a colored macro porous type 1 polypropylene meshes inserted transvaginally with two suprapubic exit point limited uh, evidence on the long term adverse effects now coming to the intramural bulking agents um, injection into submucosal tissues of the urethra or bladder and neck increase the flow resistance and permanent injectable materials repeat um, injections may be needed to achieve the effectiveness and less effective than surgery effects wear off over time artificial urinary sphincter it is the treatment of the lost resort artificial urinary symptoms allows the control of the bladder with a uh, hand operated uh, pump to compress and release the cuff around the urethra now follow up after surgery offer a follow up appointment within the 6 months retropubic mid urethral mesh sling surgery vaginal examination to check for the exposure or extrusion of the mesh sling okay thank you so much that was some um, brief description description of the urogynecology and i would like to study the evidence based medicine book for that in detail chapter 94 to 98 and after that if you watch this video all the important areas are